ready and to receive your blessings, Lord. Uh, touch every person, Lord, that, that, that is connected. Uh, this moment, Lord, we ask you to, to use the message in a powerful way, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, oh Lord, we give you praise and glory, Lord, in this hour. And um, we believe, Lord, that in this time you are ready to touch every person that, is, that opened their hearts, Lord, to, to, to be touched to be in part, Lord. And, and we believe, Father God, that during this time, during these times of this situation that we're just passing through, uh, we're just passing through, Lord. We're not going to stay forever. We're not going to stuck here, Lord. We're just passing through with you. You say, I am going to be with you all the days of your life until the end of the world. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word never fails. You are faithful, God. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to live in faith, not in fear. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless this church, Lord, Crossroads Church. Bless this ministry. Bless the pastor. Bless the, all the pastoral family in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you bless every leader of this church, Lord, and we touch every member of this church, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now with us, our pastor, my Sanders. Thank you, Pastor Angel. Thank you very much. Praise God. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight and appreciate that powerful prayer to get us started this evening. If you have your Bibles, I want you to go with me to Luke, the 11th chapter. Luke, the 11th chapter. You may have it on your phone. You can pull up whatever device you're going to use uh, to, for the scriptures tonight. I want to say a very special thank you to Joel uh, with setting up our sound on Sunday. I want to thank uh, a very special thank you to all of our ministry team that helped the drive-in service to be such a great success. We could not have done it without you, and I just want to say thank you. It was so wonderful to see everyone and to see all the beautiful faces of Crossroads family here, even some new faces and visitors that came and were with us. And so we just uh, enjoyed our time, thank the Lord that he cleared the skies and allowed us to step outside and be able to interact in some, some measure. Um, also, you may have received an email this week, but we are starting a relief fund, a relief fund. And some people have asked, is that a real email from the church? Yes, it is. And what is it going for? It's going to assist our families in our church, those that may be facing financial difficulties in these um, unprecedented times. And so let me encourage you, if you want to give, you can give online. You can give through text to give by texting 7CRC to 76959. And then um, you can put on the other tab just relief fund. If you're writing on a check, you can just put it on the memo, memo or the offering envelope. Uh, if you mail that in, just put relief fund. And that will go to help uh, our families within our local body of uh, believers. And then we will, as the Lord enables, we will continue to move out from there. So let's go to the Lord right now in prayer. Now this is going to be a little bit different service. It will be a prayer time, but this is going to be an interact interactive. And so let me encourage you to get ready to pray because I'm going to do a portion of preaching and teaching, and then we're going to stop, we're going to pray together, and then I'm going to continue. And so I want your participation, and so please join me right now as we go to the Lord once more and ask for his enabling power and for the presence of his spirit. Father, we love you. Lord God, we love you, we magnify, we praise your holy name. We ask, Lord, tonight that you would move and move in a mighty way. Lord, I believe by faith, Lord, that you're going to reach through, Lord God, and touch hearts, touch homes, and the very anointing that we feel in this room right now will be felt in every room of every listener, Lord. And I ask in the name of Jesus, let thy will be done, Lord. And Father, we love you and we thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to... I want you to look in Luke, the 11th chapter, and I want to begin reading in the first verse. It says, now it came to pass as he, speaking of Jesus, was praying in a certain place, praying in a certain place. When he ceased, then one of his disciples said, Lord, 
teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Well, could you imagine for a moment as the disciples were there with Jesus and Jesus, the, the, the great intercessor, was there praying to the Father. There was, there, was a, there was a compelling, if you will, of his disciples. And they said, oh Lord, could you teach us to pray? John taught his disciples that we want to pray like you pray. Let me encourage you. I believe that there are those within your family, within your home, that listen to you as you pray. There's been great men and women of, uh, of God that I have listened as they have called out to God. And I've said, oh Lord, let me touch your heart the way they are touching your heart. So let me encourage you to pray. And tonight is going to be the title of this message is simply, Lord, teach us to pray. I don't know how many times I have prayed that prayer. God, teach me to pray. And the Lord began to show me things in this prayer model that he gave not only to his disciples, but to every generation. And I began to see things in there I want to share with you tonight as we're going to use this as a, as a model of prayer, God's model of prayer. And Jesus said, and he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I hope by the time that we are finished that you have a greater appreciation for prayer. I hope that before we finish tonight, that you have a greater appreciation for Christ. As we look at this prayer, what I discover is that every aspect of this prayer either reflects Jesus Christ or it requires Jesus Christ's input here. And so as we look at this, before we get headlong into that, I want to hopefully, by the Spirit of the Lord to encourage you to be a person, especially in these times, to be a person of prayer. I believe prayer is going to usher in the power of God in unprecedented ways. As I told you Sunday, in these unprecedented times, God always answers in unprecedented measures. I believe the Lord is going to use your prayers to reach your family. I believe the Lord is going to use prayer to usher in his kingdom. I believe the Lord is going to use your prayers to, to combat and destroy the work of the enemy, to unveil in these last days his work, his desire, and his plan that he has for his church. I hope that before this night is through, Holy Spirit put within us such such a fervency for prayer like we've never had before. Let us yearn, my God, for more prayer than we've ever, Lord, had a desire for. I want you to know prayer carries the kingdom of God into the world. It allows the church to flow in the preeminent power of Christ. Your prayers, my prayers, the prayers of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ brings us into that power. Prayer does not replace the work. Prayer fuels the work of the kingdom of God. John Wesley said this, God does nothing but by prayer and everything with it. Now as we look, we also see Oswald Chambers said this, prayer does not fit us for the greater work. Prayer is the greater work. Prayer should never be dull, dull drama that the church endures to curry heaven's favor. Prayer is not meant to be a dull exercise that we just engage in, trying to wrangle from God his favor so we can accomplish his will. Oh, no, no. Prayer is the very essence. It is the fervency of the heart of the believer because what we understand is that God's desire is to bring forth his kingdom. Prayer should be the very heartbeat of the church, an exciting enterprise. And the passionate purpose of the flame-filled heart. Martin Luther said this, Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of God's willingness. 
I believe that the Lord is willing to move. I believe that the Lord's desire is to move. I believe that God wants to move in your family, move in your heart, move in your finances, move in your relationships. I believe the willingness of God would astound you. It would shock you. It would set you back on your heels if you understood how much God wants to move in and through this land. But the Lord has chosen the church by which he would display his glory, display his might and display his power you show me a willing church that is willing to pray I will show you a church that will move heaven and earth I will show you a church that will come about and be about the father's business prayer is not platitudes of complacent pleas oh no Prayer is the ardent fire, the Holy Spirit breathing forth the will of God into the helpless, hopeless world. Let me say that again. Prayer is the ardent fire of the Holy Spirit breathing forth the will of God into the helpless, hopeless world. E. Bunyan said this, search for a person who claims to have found Christ apart from someone else's prayer. And your search will go on forever. In other words, we cannot come into the kingdom of God unless the Holy Spirit had impressed someone to pray, someone to call out, someone to plead on your behalf, someone that may have not known your name, seen your face, knew who you were, but they knew by the presence of the Spirit of God as they begin to intercede, as they begin to cry out, Lord, save that one, save that teenage boy who is bound in sin, save that teenage girl who is bound in sin, and save that mother, save that father. You are here today because the Holy Spirit prompted someone to pray. The Holy Spirit enabled someone to understand and to see that you were in need. And oh, how we must pass it on. The alterations of nations comes about at the altar. Chains melt, walls fall, hell runs, heaven enters, eternities transform at the very tear-stained altar. As we hold on to the altar, as we go to the cross of Calvary, as we go to the Lord and we petition on behalf of nations, let me tell you, hell does not believe or want or desire a praying church, but a praying praying church will bring the walls down. It will cause viruses to run. It will cause people's body to be healed. It is the power in which God has called us to. Prayer. Prayer. I'm going to read this to you. If the church would only awaken to her responsibility of intercession, we could well evangelize the world in a short time. It is not God's plan that the world be merely evangelized ultimately. It should be evangelized in every generation. There should be a constant gospel witness in every corner of the world that's, that no sinner need close his eyes to death without hearing the gospel, the good news of salvation. As we look we see prayer as the very method and means by which God will use to further his kingdom. Jesus gives us a model of prayer. And in that model of prayer, I can see Christ Jesus as he, he is either reflected or he's required in order that we may have these privileges that we talk about. I want you to note something here. As he makes this declaration, and one that maybe the disciples might not have anticipated. They had known Jehovah God. They knew the covenant God. They had heard the stories of the wrath of God. They had heard of the God who, who put the Egyptians back in their place. He, they had heard of the God who delivered them out of uh, all of the bondages and even Babylonian captivity. And now they were in the day, even the, some of the disciples being zealots, uh, they were looking and anticipating the establishment of a natural government on earth. But the Lord was showing them it wasn't that time, but he begins the prayer. They said, we want to know how to pray. He said, let me show you how to pray. Our Father is how he began the prayer. He began with relationship. A relationship between a child and the Father. 
Let me tell you today, and we have preached this endlessly here, it is something we live by, it's something we believe, that the relationship is one of the greatest treasures God has given us. Everything flows from relationship. Our relationship with God and our relationship with Him is paramount. And we cannot have a relationship with the Lord if we don't spend time with the Lord. If the church wants to know God, we must return to the closet of prayer. We must cry out to the Lord. And we must begin with relationship. Because everything flows from relationship. Oh, the church is after new methods. But let me tell you, men are God's method. The church is looking for better methods. God's looking for better men. What the church needs today is not more machinery or better. Not new organizations or more and novel methods. But men who the Holy Spirit can use. Men of prayer. Men of mighty prayer. The Holy Spirit does not come on machinery. But on men. He does not anoint plans. But men. Men and women of prayer. E.M. Bounds wrote that so many years ago, but it still holds true today. And I believe, folks, that in this time, in this delay, that God is doing a mighty work in the heart of the church. And in the heart of the church, God's reestablishing His relationship with you. He is separating the things that we need to separate from. He's showing us the priorities and realigning our days. He is giving us opportunities to pursue Him more than ever because God has a work. He has a work for the church, and it's in that relationship that we have with him that keeps us where we need to be. We cannot grow faster than relationship. We cannot grow stronger than relationship. Weak relationship lead to limitless, limited outcome, but strong relationship lead to endless possibilities. Our relationship with God we need to be more for God to do more with God. As we look here, we see in the garden, the enemy was after one thing. He was after relationship. He was out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Because the ability of love and, and union with the Lord had been separated from him as he was cast forth out of heaven. As he tried to rise up, to gather a following, the Lord saw the pride that was in him and he was cast out of heaven like lightning. But now the only way, knowing he could not get back to the, heart, to the Father, he could not touch the Son nor the Holy Spirit. He went after the heart of God by going after man. And how he did that was luring man into sin. And because of sin, we hide from the presence of God. Because of sin, we blame others for the reason for our inadequacies and our inabilities. Someone else has done it. It's someone else's fault. We try to cover the shame of our nakedness through our works and good works. But I say to you, it is time that the church gets back to the place where we understand God wants a relationship with us. There is a spirit in the land today. It is the Antichrist spirit. We know that we are living in the last days because the Antichrist spirit is rearing his head in the spirit, declaring that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. Any spirit that declares that Jesus did not come in the flesh is not of God. What the enemy is after is the sacrifice of Christ. But he is also says and denies any spirit according to 1 John. Any spirit that denies the Father and the Son is not of God. But it is the Antichrist. In fact, the word of the Lord tells us in 1 John 4 and 3, every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which has you heard was coming and now already is in the world. Now he goes on to say, the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the, the Son has the Father also. See, the Antichrist spirit that's in the land today is wanting to deny you the relationship between you and the Father through the Son, Jesus Christ. 
By denying the fact that Jesus came in the flesh, died for our sins, rose again, ascended to the Father, and is at the right hand evermore to make intercession for you and I. When Jesus Christ came, as the word of the Lord tells us, he gave us the ability to become children of God, sons of God. Now, according to the scripture, his spirit dwells inside of us. And we know according to experience, when you are born again, his spirit abides in you. And his spirit cries, Abba, Father. That relationship. The disciples wanted to know, Lord, how do we pray? How do we pray? Let's pray this way. Our Father. I want you right now, wherever you're at, I want you to stand up and we're going to go to God in prayer right now. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and I'm going to pray for relationship. I want you to pray tonight, God, strengthen my relationship with you because that's what the Lord is doing right now. I want you to pray that the Lord would strengthen the relationship of the marriage because that's what the Lord is doing right now. I want you to pray that God would strengthen the relationship between sons and daughters, uh, between mothers and fathers right now. Would you go to the Lord with me in prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, we see, almighty God, that you created the home before you created, Lord God, the church. Lord God, you brought the family together, Lord God, in relationship. Lord, to be a reflection, Lord God, of your love in the world, that we would protect one another, that we would encourage one another, that we would be, Lord God, a, a strength to one another. I'm asking in the name of the Lord, with the spirit that is in the land, evermore wanting to separate and Lord God uh, segregate uh, and keep people apart uh, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus uh, that it would backfire on him uh, that Lord God that relationship would not be destroyed uh, but they would be in Lord God they would be strengthened uh, Lord God we know that there are those that are, have struggles right now financial struggles emotional struggles relational struggles uh, I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus that you would strengthen relationships right now that we would put such a value you on relationship that you put on relationship Lord God that Father that even now Lord that our relationship with you but Lord be ever increasing Lord oh God that we could be much with you Lord God and then and only then will we do much for you Lord my God I pray tonight Lord my God reveal yourself in such a mighty way Lord we want to know you we want to know what Lord causes your heart to break we want to love with you love and hate what you hate Lord God I pray Father that Lord that tonight Lord this very night oh Lord Jesus I got up this morning Lord and I believe that there's been a change there's been a shifting Lord God there's been a moving Lord in your spirit and I believe Father God that you Lord infusing in the hearts of your children Lord you are infusing Lord in their heart Lord God that you are in control and that Lord God you are moving Moving. You are moving, Lord. Oh God, it was never your will that one would perish. You want a relationship with every single human being, Lord God, alive today. No matter their background, no matter what they are into. Lord, you want a relationship with them. And Lord, we're asking tonight. We're asking tonight, oh God. Lord, that first and foremost, that your body, Lord God, your body of believers, Lord God, will be reconciled in their relationship to you. Lord, you said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then, Lord God, we would, you would hear from heaven, and then, Almighty God, you would heal our lands. Lord, my God, we repent of our wickedness, of idolatry. Lord, Lord God, we repent tonight. Lord God, of Lord, holding, Lord, the bitterness and the unforgiveness in our heart toward those who have hurt us. Lord God, we fast tonight, Lord God. Remove, Lord God, every hindrance, Lord. Oh God, forgive us, Lord, for walking more in fear than we have in faith. Lord God, forgive us, Lord, for putting things before you tonight. Lord Jesus, we ask in your name. We ask in your name, Lord God. Lord, build those relationships. Lord, restore relationships tonight in the name of the living God. He continued that prayer. See, Jesus gave us the privilege through his sacrifice. 
We can only call the Father, Father, because the Son sacrificed Himself, giving us the ability and the right to become heirs and joint heirs through Him and Him alone. In other words, we couldn't call God Father without the Son living in our heart. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means holy, but it means more than that. It means purify, consecrate. It means to be holy, to sanctify, render or declare sacred. It means to separate things that are profane and dedicate things to the Lord. To purify, to cleanse externally, internally. It means to be free from the guilt of sin. Jesus Christ said this, Be you holy, for I am holy. Peter quotes him in Peter 1.16, Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. Holy is not just who God is. Holy is what God does does. God frees us from sin through the power of the Lord Jesus Christ's sacrifice. He purifies our heart through the indwelling of his spirit. He separates us and pulled me out of the deep dark pit of sin and he put my feet upon the rock that I could stand and find my footing. He separated you tonight from those things of the world to set you aside and apart not just to rot out but a person that would be ready to, to rock out for the kingdom of God if you will. A person that God has brought and set aside for a time such as this. The Lord is doing a great work. He is purifying the body of Christ. Oh Lord God, we don't want a grace that leaves us in sin. We want a grace that empowers us. A great grace that enables us to come out of the sin sick world in order to live according to your will. We need to cry out, our Father you are holy and you make us holy. Lord God we can't holify ourselves. You have to do it. Lord God we commit ourselves to you and Lord holy is who you are and holy is what you do holiness is what God is doing right now he is separating he is shaking about he's moving his church to a platform and a place oh church of the living God if you could understand even a greater reality and revelation of what Jesus Christ has done in order that we may be holy we couldn't be holy without him but oh my God because of what he's done now we have the ability because the Holy One is lives in inside of the heart of the church if you have sat down I want you to stand back up I want you to pray right now God Lord bring the holy fire of the Lord bring the Holy Spirit oh my God bring the Holy Spirit Lord God bring the holiness of God back to the house of the Lord bring such a Lord God overwhelming desire Lord for holiness in the hearts of your children I know my God there's someone tuned in tonight. Lord will tune in tomorrow. They'll look at this and say oh that man has lost his mind but my God at this very moment I pray that you will reach into their heart. Lord God begin to do an eternal work. Lord God begin to work inside of them. Let there be a passion and a fire. Begin to Lord God burn within them. Let them see that you are a holy God and that Lord God you have so much in store for them. And Lord God is well beyond the chains and the shackles that they're carrying around of the grief and the regret and the remorse. Lord God, let them see one more beer is not going to drown their sorrow. Lord God, one more. Lord God, joint is not going to cause them freedom. Lord God, one more. Lord, a relationship is not what they need, but Lord, a relationship with you that Lord God will produce in them such a fire of zeal, of purpose. Lord, I ask in Jesus' name. 
Oh, merciful God, I pray, Father, that, Lord, that you would move. That, Lord God, that we would value and understand that, Lord God, the holiness cannot be accomplished outside of you. When you said to the disciples, this is how you pray. Our Father, we have a relationship with you. Hallowed be your name. You are a holy God. And the reason we can call you Father and the reason we can stand in your presence is because there has been a sacrifice made of your Son and we do not devalue that sacrifice. But Lord, we embrace that sacrifice tonight. Thank you, Lord God, for the work that you are doing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Your kingdom come. Your kingdom come. Jesus said to those that were there, as the Pharisees asked when the kingdom of God would come, Jesus answered them this way. He said, the kingdom of God is not with observation, but the kingdom of God is within you. When the Lord Jesus Christ teach, taught, was teaching his disciples to pray, as he teaches us to pray, we understand we have a relationship with him and that he is not only holy, but he enables us to be holy by the work that he is doing and the work that he did on the cross. But when we pray, thy kingdom come, we want the, the entire world to be enveloped with the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of God right now is within us. And so what we're asking for when we say, Lord, thy kingdom come, we're asking God first, let it manifest in me. And I believe that when Jacob laid his head upon that rock and has he dreamed the dream with the ladder extended to heaven and the angels ascended and descended upon that ladder, that ladder being Jesus and God the Father spoke his wheel up above the top of that ladder that Jacob awakened that next morning and he said, oh my Lord, this is the gate of heaven. This is Bethel, the house of God and in the New testament what we see know you not that your body is the temple of the holy spirit let me say to you that jesus christ is the ladder and through his sacrifice he's opened the door of our heart and now the kingdom of god the gate of heaven and what the lord will accomplish on earth he will bring forth through the heart of the people of god he will use the church to further his kingdom as we look here thy kingdom come what we're asking is, Lord, let it begin in me. I want you to make that your prayer tonight. God, let your kingdom come. Let your rule and your reign be accomplished in me, in my home, in my family, on my workplace, everywhere I go. Let me understand the king is on the throne of my heart. And where I go, the kingdom of God will be established. The kingdom of God will go further. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the body of Christ, against the knowledge of the son of the lord jesus christ pray with me if you will father in the name of the living god we pray thy kingdom come thy kingdom come lord you tore the veil from top to bottom in the temple at the moment that your son gave up his spirit to give us a realization that lord god it is your will to open the gate open the heart to allow man to enter into the holies of holies through the blood sacrifice of jesus christ i pray father god let thy will be done let thy kingdom come lord let thy kingdom come in us and through us in every avenue lord god in every area that we go let us realize lord god that we hold and house the answer and lord jesus that door would never be open without your sacrifice would never be open without your sacrifice i know we could continue to go but there's one last point i want to make here he said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. He said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Watchman Nee, reading his book on prayer, but he made a statement that I thought was so relevant. 
And it's such, pain is such a clear picture. I want to share that with you. He said, prayer is to God's will as rails are to a train. The locomotive is full of power. It is capable of running thousands of miles a day. But if there are no rails, it cannot move forward, not a single inch. If it dares to move without the rails, it will soon sink into the earth. It may be able to travel over great distances, yet it cannot go to any place where no rails have been laid. And such is the relationship between prayer and God's work. When we were missionaries in the country of Scotland, many times we found it easier to get on the train and go downtown. And we would go into the central station. We would board a train at one of the depots and we would take that train all the way into the central station. But that central station would just, the rails would stop. There would be an engine on the front of the train and an engine on the back of the train. And depending on which direction you were going would determine whether you were in the front or the back. But you would ride that train and when it would come to that central station, it would stop. There was, the rails had ended. You could not go any further. Let me say to you that the kingdom of God can move, move with power and might. It can go to all reaches of the world. It can travel thousands and thousands and thousands of miles and seconds. But it cannot move beyond the rails of prayer. It is the responsibility of the Lord, of the, of the body of Christ to pray. And I believe as those rails are likened into prayer, if we could get that image in our mind, if you need a, a, a train load of provision, I believe we can begin to pray. If you need a train, road, a, 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 a train load of deliverance, I believe if you'll begin to pray. I believe as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ grabs hold of the reality that there is power in prayer, then we will stand and as the Lord Jesus has told us as he declared to his disciples whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven if you we want to see the power of God loosed on the earth we need to begin to pray and to cry out to God if we don't do it then let me ask you who's going to who's going to pray for your children who's going to pray for your children's children Who's going to pray for those children that no one is praying for? Those that are lost and undone and away from God. Who's going to see after this mess is over with how the, the people are going to recover? They're going to recover because God's Spirit's going to move through the people of God. I'm going to pray as one last point tonight. I'm going to pray the will of God be done. Let the will of God be accomplished. Father, in the name of the living God, we pray that your will be done. Your will be done, Lord, in our life individually as it is in heaven. Lord, let your will be done, Lord God, in our home as it is in heaven. Lord, let your will be done in the church as it is in heaven. Lord God, let your will be accomplished in the cities in which we dwell as it is in heaven. Let it, Lord God, be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we ask these things. We believe, Lord, tonight that it is your desire that there, Lord God, is power, Lord, in prayer. And there's power in agreement. And Lord, we pray that your will be accomplished. And Lord, as we seek you, Lord, and as we seek your will, we believe, Lord, Lord God, as we pray, Father, that, Lord, we will pray your will, and, Lord, we will see, Father God, lives transformed, homes, Lord God, reestablished. We will see, Lord God, those come off the ventilator, Lord God, and back to life. Lord, we will see, Lord God, what you want us to see. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, your will be done. Your will be done in our life, as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. I want to thank you once again for tuning in. And I hope that you are encouraged, that you're strengthened. Let me say, church, I want you to be about the Father's business. I want you to seek God every day 
and ask him, Lord, what is your will? What is your will in the timing of the country being reopened and the church opening the doors again? Lord, what is your will? And I want us to pray against the enemy's devices, his tactics. You may not agree with political leaders, but I'm going to ask you to pray for them. I'm going to ask you to pray for our president. I want you to pray for the, for the Republicans and the Democrats and the liberals and every other politician that whatever their agenda, whatever their plans and purposes may be, that they will find the will of God. God's will will be accomplished I want you to pray for our local officials. I want us to pray for the, those that are, that are in the food service, in the medical, in, uh, in, in medicine, and those that, that are in the public, and just pray to God that he would move in such a mighty way. We thank you tonight, and we love you and appreciate you. I want you to be tuning in, Facebook Live on Sunday or the radio, KLRP, and we'll be ministering there at 1030. And uh, we'll be uploading other ministry and teaching in the week. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. And I hope that you will be blessed. Amen. God bless you.